the image in the in the video. Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. I think that's a great yeah. idea, Chase. Hey, let's let's talk about confidence for a minute. Let's let's right. do this. Let's let's run around the room and let's just talk about. Uh, let's each one of us take a minute and a half, two minutes, and talk about what we think about uh, confidence. Something we could show from a body language perspective that would give us confidence that we could tell everybody to use. You want to do that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. yeah. All right. All right, Greg. Why don't you go first? So I. When you're talking about confidence, let's talk about it in fake it till you make it. Because if you're not confident, then you're going to be worried about what you're doing. What you need to do is project openness, project that you're comfortable. We often say that the most powerful person in the room is one who moves the least. We don't mean you don't walk, you stand against the wall. We mean you don't fidget, you don't do a lot of that. So what we need you to do is to open, get your chin up to normal level, like at parallel to the floor. And any insecurity that's in your body, just let it flow through to your feet. That's a really powerful tool. And if you don't have those today, you can create some subroutines for what you think confident people do and practice them until you start to feel more safe. What we know is that doing those kinds of things will make you feel more confident because your thinking brain will come back online when you're under stress. And what I suggest to people all the time is start with a low stress situation and build your way up. Because the first time you walk in front of you know an audience and start doing this, you might feel weird. But if you don't think anybody's watching and you're walking through a mall doing it, you'll probably feel okay. And we all, after all, build on process the way humans work. Remember, Chase, what you, when you, were, you remember when you were talking to that guy, we were uh, at Dr. Phil's, and we talked to, yeah. for some reason, we were talking to a witness or something or a, a jury person, jury member. Yeah, it, he, was a jury that, member in, he was a jury member in the Murdoch trial. Fails or do something. While you're standing right here in front of me, stop for a second and curl your toes in your shears. Just do that. You feel that? Oh, do that when you feel them. Go walk. Because I can't see it. Like, you can't see it. Yeah, in don't. your brain, what's happening yeah, is that, that whole, all those hormones that come out yeah. when you get scared start turning off the way your brain works. You and I'm sorry when I said let it flow through right. your feet. What I mean is I've been doing this for a long time and I coach lots of executives and people who are uncomfortable in front of other people, You know, whether that's a earnings call or whatever else. When a person feels that stress, if they'll curl their toes in their shoes, you're wearing shoes. Nobody notices. The other thing is simply remembering Greg Hartley said, do this. Chase Hughes said, do this. Mark Bowden said, do this. Scott Rouse said, do this. You're bringing your thinking brain back online. And in effect, what you're doing is short circuiting the adrenal flow and all of the impact of adrenaline and fight or flight on your brain because you're taking control back. So try it. Remember, fake it till you make it. Open, let all of your insecurity go into your shoes, curl your toes in your shoes, and practice. Give yourself permission to fail and do it over and over and over. You'll get good. Yeah. And the two biggest mistakes that people make, two biggest mistakes, number one is confidence is about permission and giving yourself permission because no one is going to come tap you on the shoulder and give it to you. You give yourself permission. Number two, the number one way to ruin your confidence is to think about or worry about status or hierarchy with other people. Just stop worrying about it. And if you want to compare yourself to other people or challenge yourself, here's the one thing you can do is challenge yourself to move slower than everybody else in the room. Just move slower. That's it. You can still burn off that energy, like Greg said, by squishing your toes and your feet. And remember that if you're walking into a Rolex store, no one knows how much money you have. They're going to go off of how you're acting. So whether or not you have like some big platinum card in your wallet or not is going to be rooted on how you're behaving because nobody can see that. So the permission is within yourself and give yourself the role of being the most comfortable person in the room. Can I out comfort the other people? Mark? Yeah, just so you know, if you're walking into a Rolex store, you should have been on the list like years ago, you're not getting one. Any, you're not getting one in the moment anyway. But but go in, have have a browse, have a browse, and I mean, what a great thing actually. Go go into a Rolex store, have a browse because they haven't got any to sell you anyway. So 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 you know, give yourself permission to just walk around knowing that actually you should be more confident than they are because they have no supply and they've done it to themselves. Now, uh, here's what I would suggest is make sure you really complete your actions. And here's why. Confidence, look, there is one argument to say confidence is something that you have. There's another argument if you talk about the word confides, with trust. It literally means with trust, fides, trust, on, with, with trust, is that other people must trust you. 
for you to be seen as confident. And my guess is, is that's probably what you want is, is not only your own confidence, but you want to be seen as confident. They need to trust you. So they need to know that you will do what you're suggesting you're going to do. And they're seeing that in your movement. So if you make a gesture out, make sure that gesture completes. If you go to have a drink, make sure, oh, my Lord, make sure you complete that. Because if you go to have a have a drink and you're, you, you don't complete that. <laughs> right. It's like, well, what's going on with you? Like, if you can't decide whether you're having a drink or not, how can I trust you with my thoughts? How can I trust you with the relationship? So have a objective in mind and complete that objective in the most direct way you possibly can. Don't be indirect. Be direct. Complete your gestures. And then at least other people will feel you're confident. They'll feed that back to you. That will give you more internal confidence. Here's what I'd say is, is don't start so much with yourself because you've got to battle your own thoughts. Start externally. And there'll be all kinds of people who disagree with this. But start externally because it's the fastest, most effective intervention into how you're thinking and feeling is from the external world, not from the internal or spiritual world. Scott, what are your thoughts on it? I agree with all that. One thing when I'm training people to, uh, when they're undercover officers, one thing you want to do is train them not to be completely confident. There's some things that, you, that 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 I show them how to do, how to look like you're not the most confident one so you don't stick out, so you don't stand out. Because if you're supposed to be a drug dealer or you're supposed to be somewhere you're not supposed to be, uh, you've got to sort of blend in. So the things you do, you keep your shoulders down and you may look around some, fidget around your pocket, scratch in places that you wouldn't normally scratch because you don't care if anybody's looking at you or not or you're, you're not uh, acting as if somebody may be looking at you. You do those types of things and you make all those little perky jerky movements and stuff and and maybe not move around so much you draw attention, but move, move around enough so it doesn't look like you've got your head together and you're thinking. One time we were in a restaurant in Nashville and I looked over into the the bar area. We were eating and I saw a guy standing there. He looked like the most confident guy in the world. And I realized this is somebody I had trained before. And I knew I, and he wasn't there to to hang out in the bar with and, and meet women or, or have drinks or whatever. He was there working. And I knew that. And so I walked up to him and I said, hey, man. And the last thing you want to hear if you're a cop is, you remember me? Because that means... You've, you either arrested him or you've done something and there's, you're probably going to end up uh, in a situation with him. So I walked up and I said, hey, man, you remember me? He said, no. And I said, I'm the one that taught you not to stand this way and act this way. I said, you're going to get us all killed in here, man. You've got to be careful. You, you st you're standing out like a dang red flag up in here. You've got to stop this. You've got to remember your training. So when you come into a situation like this, you don't look like that you're a cop. You, you, you're too... Number one, it was too clean. I was like, dude, you you look too clean. Not that some aren't clean. That's not what I'm saying. But in this situation, he needed to, to look like he was a little, a little rough, and he didn't. And he was showing all the things of confidence. He was standing standing up, standing up straight, had his head up like this. He wasn't moving a whole lot. And when he did look around, he would look like this. Whoever he was talking to was looking at him straight in the eyes. He was talking to him the whole time. Didn't blink a, lot, a whole lot, nothing. He was doing all the classic uh, cues of confidence. And I said, this goes against everything. And I waited for the other guy once the situation had, had, that he was dealing with it was gone. That's when I approached him. And I said, you you got to stop doing this, man. You're, you're this, whatever you just did, I'd, I'd get rid of that, you know, that, that connection, because that's going to raise a lot of red flags for that guy as well. They know what to look for. If you look too confident, it's not going to work. So when you're looking confident, you want to look the opposite of what, what I'm training people to look like most of the time is not confident in those things. So like everybody else in here has been talking about, you got to be still, you got to talk at a, at a solid level. You got to don't make your voice go up and go down and all, all those kind of things as you're talking. And when you're talking to someone, look at them. They're the only, like, like Bill Clinton does. They're the only person in the world. That's how you, that's, that's charisma that, and people mistake a lot of times confidence for this really great charisma and stuff. But it's not. If you just look at someone while they're talking to you, try not to blink a lot. Don't stare at them like you're a psychopath or anything. Don't give them a psychopathic stare. But engage with them. When you engage with them, make sure they're the only person in the whole world. Those, those are the things I would suggest for confidence. The Behavior Panel.